Good evening. Good evening. My name is Peter McKeith, the Dean of the Faye Jones School of Architecture and Design. And on behalf of our graduates in architecture, interior design, and landscape architecture, I welcome one and all to this spring 2021 commencement ceremony. As we begin, I hope you might have been enjoying the medley of tunes drawn from 1971. We ended with Marvin Gaye's What's Going On. But uh, we will move forward now more officially with our ceremony. I'd like to ask both our graduates and all families and friends and guests who are attending to please rise for the playing of our national anthem. Thank you. I'd like to ask our graduates just to stand, stay standing for one more minute. Our guests can sit, but as we have always begun our graduation ceremonies, I've asked our graduates to turn to those who have supported them and loved them throughout their years here, uh, and, as well as many years before, and applaud those who have supported you and loved you. A round of applause for your family, your friends, our guests. Graduates, please be seated. We have an exceptional graduating class from an exceptional school in an exceptional year. And welcome, all of you, to this commencement ceremony of 2021. I speak on behalf of our faculty, our staff, our alumni, our friends, our benefactors, and I say to each one of you, congratulations. Since your arrival in the school, we've advocated to you the transformative role that design can have in a complex, challenging world at all scales, in all contexts, anywhere, for anyone. In this year, more than ever, we now know that that role of design is one of environmental responsibility, of responsibility for health and wellness, of responsibility for building well in architecture, in interior design, and in landscape architecture. Your future role is also emphatically one we hope of public service and advocacy for community, resiliency, and justice. You've prepared for these roles through the rigors of design studios, seminars, lectures, and workshops, and you've demonstrated exceptional ability and stamina in the transference of your studies into both remote and safe distance modes of teaching and learning. You graduate surely in an exceptional moment, but on behalf of our faculty, my first message to you is simple and clear. We so admire your perseverance and your commitment to achieving your degree. You graduate again, yes, in an exceptional moment, but on behalf of our faculty, my second message to you is simple and clear. With empathy, with care, with integrity, we believe you're prepared to move forward and assist in building a better world. We are grateful for our time with you and we are grateful to your parents, families, and friends for their support of you throughout these past years. 
We wish you well now and in the future. And please know that the Faye Jones School and the University of Arkansas will always be here to assist you. Now in this moment of welcome and in this moment of expressions of gratitude, I'd like to look ahead, in fact, to the conclusion of the ceremony when, in fact, we may be in too great a hurry, in some sense, to move forward uh, with uh, proper expressions of gratitude to those in the school who have assisted you in your studies. Our faculty in our respective departments, architecture, landscape architecture, interior design, surely deserve your thanks. And for those faculty who are listening at home, I say to you, thank you, thank you, thank you for your perseverance and your stamina and your belief in our students and their future. I'd like to thank specifically members of the school staff, Melinda Smith, Sherry Lynn Brown, Teresa Parrish, Rachel Fletcher, Michelle Priberno in our Student Success Office, Michelle Parks, Cassidy Flanagan, Shawnee Myers in our Communications Office, Alana Massey and Emily Beavers in the Departmental Office, Doug Walsh, Carol Rouser, and this evening in particular, a special thanks to Byron McCune for ordering and organizing this entire ceremony in our brand new location of Barnhill Arena. Our fabrication school uh, shop staff, I think you all have come to know well, Angela Carpenter, uh, uh, Justin Tucker, Randall Dickinson, and there are so many others who deserve your thanks. Please give them at least silently now your gratitude. We welcome, again, all parents, all friends, all guests, not only to the university, but to the school and to the school's community. And let's look forward now to our commencement ceremony and move forward with further aspects of, uh, of the school from our speakers and soon, yes, soon, the awarding of degrees. I will now, if I can find my notes, move forward to those uh, special, to those recognitions in particular. That's right. We have in the last seven years begun to recognize the legacy of the school, which now reaches 75 years into the past. We have done so in particular by recognizing those graduates from 50 years ago and 25 years ago, and we have often been able to have a representative member from each of those graduating classes, the 50-year alumni and the 25-year alumni, speaking to our graduates in person. This year, that is uh, not possible, but we do have recorded greetings from a representative of the class of 1971 and a representative of the class of 1996. The 1971 alumni representative is architect Jeffrey Shearer, fellow of the American Institute of Architects, a Fort Smith native, whose Twitter account notes that he is an architect, artist, contrarian, humanitarian, father, grandfather, reader, walker, photographer, husband, dog lover, and lastly, the founder of what used to be known as Meyer Shearer Rock Castle Design in Minneapolis, Minnesota. But uh, Jeff Shearer enjoyed 40 years of leadership at Meyer Shearer Rock Castle, building more than 350 projects. As I said, elected into the AIA College of Fellows in 1998, Jeff retired from full-time work in September 2016 and now focuses on studying and doing his artwork, which he gives to anyone who wishes to donate to their local library or literacy cause. Let's hear from 1971 alumnus Jeffrey Shearer. Greetings. 50 years ago, I never thought that I would be asked to address the class of 2021. I also never imagined the parallels. We witnessed the lunar rover, you the Mars rover. We witnessed the beginning of the pullout of Vietnam and you are witnessing Afghanistan. We celebrated Louis Kahn's gold medal, you Marlins. We celebrated Earth Day with as much enthusiasm as we protested the war and read the Pentagon Papers. You were facing the loss of journalism's integrity. We went to the library, you opened Google. 
We used hard and soft pencils. You used hard drives and software. We met face to face. You have FaceTime. Upon graduation, I was thrilled that I survived five years with a passing grade and scared to death that I wouldn't be able to compete in the wide world of architecture. It was a mixed emotion. Today, you are likely wrestling with many similar emotions. As design professionals, you now will embark on shaping the future of your respective professions. And while design may be your foremost interest, I can say with conviction that unless you shape your lives with compassion, empathy, and a deep understanding of community, your contributions will not be as fulfilling. The most important spark that I got from the school was a passion to deeply investigate and learn, but an equally important imperative, if you want to change the world for the better, is to listen. Listen not only to your inner voice with honesty, but listen to the silent cries of the world. Your true client is like Janice. One face is your actual client, the other is society. Janice was the god of beginnings, passages, and endings. We know from history that conflict will always be part of life's passages. No matter if you wish otherwise, there will also always be struggle for equity and fairness. As a well-educated and eager professional, you must now engage and learn how to be an influential professional at the table of resolutions. I'm honored to represent the 50th anniversary class of 1971. I'm equally honored that you chose the Faye Jones School of Architecture as your launching pad. All the best to each of you. And while I'll not be around for the 2071 presentation, I hope one of you in this audience will be able to address that graduating class with as much love and compassion as I feel towards you. Thank you and good luck in your lives. Bye-bye. I appreciate your applause. I know that Jeff is at home in Portland, Oregon, listening in, as surely is our next speaker, speaking on behalf of the graduating class of 1996 from the Faye Jones School, Reggie Wright. Reggie Wright is president of RB Group Incorporated and NOB A plus D in Bentonville, a practitioner of architecture and construction with more than 20 years of experience. He has uh, experience uh, not only in architecture, also in construction management, sits on the planning commission for the city of Bentonville, and most recently has joined the Faye Jones School as coordinator for the school's initiatives in recruitment, enrollment, retention, and graduation towards greater diversity and inclusion in the school. Let's listen to Reggie Wright's greetings of the class of 1996. Hello, graduating class of 2021. On behalf of the graduation class of 1996, we want to extend a hearty congratulations to you guys. You made it. Congratulations. Good job. With that being said, I also want to remind you guys of great responsibility that now lies on your shoulder. Responsibility to those that have helped you guys to get to where you are now and also responsibility to those that will continue to help you further your career path, and also responsibility to those whose lives you guys are going to impact through your design careers. With that being said, we wish you guys the best of luck and a great future. We also want to encourage you guys to continue to aim high as you have been doing. And I also want to challenge you guys to always to remain humble in all aspects of your lives. And finally, I want to remind you guys to never forget about what I call the Faye family, your Faye Jones School of Architecture and Design family. We need you guys to remember us. We need you guys to be great advocates of the school. So never forget about your family. Guys, we wish you the best of luck and congratulations.
I want to thank the class of 1971 as well as the class of 1996, not only for uh, Reggie's words and for Jeff's words, but really for their contributions over 50 and 25 years in giving back to the school. You'll know as uh, coming alumni that you will join the Faye Jones School alumni community of more than 3,000 graduates now out in the world. And that community is available to you across the United States and literally across the world. Please keep that in mind should you need any assistance going forward. Right? That is at least the message to grasp from uh, Jeff Shearer and Reggie Wright. Now with those acknowledgments to the past, let us look to the future. Let us look to recognizing this year's graduates with some special recognitions and our senior scholar address. For this, I pass the microphone directly to Ethel Goodstein Murphy, Associate Dean and Professor of Architecture for the Faye Jones School. Ethel. Thank you, Peter. Good evening, everyone. And since I won't have another opportunity to do so, my warmest congratulations to 60 some odd of my favorite students who in mere moments make the transition from being students to being colleagues and friends. The best to all of you as your journey of lifelong learning continues and your opportunities to make the world a better place through design, a more equitable place through design will unfold. But tonight, my task is to acknowledge special recognitions Last month, the Faye Jones School recognized the outstanding achievements of our students at our honors and awards recognition reception. Well, technically it was reception, even if we were all in our own spaces doing this via Zoom, it was still a reception. Although time does not permit us to recap those announcements in detail tonight, we will take the opportunity to honor those distinguished graduates once again. All recipients of final year awards and distinctions, including our Honors College Scholars, please stand. You know who you are. No time for modesty. Rock those medals. A round of applause for this spectacular group. There is one recognition, however, that stands out even among the creme de la creme that we have just noted, and that is the senior scholar. The university acknowledges a graduating senior from each academic unit of the university as its senior scholar, and that is the individual who comes to commencement with the highest grade point average earned through the course of her or his undergraduate degree career. I am delighted to recognize architecture major Daniel Barker as the Faye Jones School Senior Scholar and cede the podium to architecture department head John Folan to introduce Daniel as we await Daniel's remarks. Again, congratulations, dear students. Thank you, Dr. Goodstein. Um, it's my distinct pleasure to introduce Daniel Barker. Um, there's many of you who are graduating today who could have represented this class. Uh, I think the achievement represented in, in Daniel's uh, grade point average and the way that he excelled in the program is one index of success, but all of you have succeeded in ways, and Daniel represents those successes in, in, with great clarity and great effectiveness. It's been my pleasure to work with him the past three semesters uh, very closely. And through that, what I've seen him represent is the best of all of you. Selflessness, perseverance, and a path to a better future that all of you will craft. So with that, I would like to introduce this year's senior scholar, Daniel Barker.
Thank you, John. Uh, I want to start out tonight by thanking everyone, all of our friends and family that are joining us. It's really nice that <clears throat> so many of us are able to be here together uh, in person, but also it's wonderful that so many more are joining us online remotely. And I want to start off by thanking y'all tonight because one of my first experiences in an architecture firm in late high school, I was working and one of the architects came up to me and he said, you know, going to college, getting a degree in architecture was without a doubt the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life. And I laughed at him. I thought it was funny. I don't anymore. <laughs> I understand he was telling the truth. And it's because of y'all that are here tonight that are the people that have been with us all the way. For the past four and five years, y'all have been by our side to give us the support and the encouragement that we have needed to make it this far. Because it hasn't been easy and we wouldn't be here without you. So thank you. I also want to recognize our school with Dean McKeith and Associate Dean, Dr. Goodstein Murphy, and all the professors that we have grown so close to over these past several years because it's by their dedication and their investment to us that not only from the first day that we stepped into the studio, but also especially in the past year in unprecedented circumstances, that we have had a past couple of semesters that have been truly inspiring and just as rewarding as any other. And I can't thank enough our fabrication staff that have been here for the past year and worked just as tirelessly to make sure that we've been able to continue to have the resources and materials that we need to build a design without limits. So thank you. Now, it's not possible for me to share with you everything that we have all learned over these past four and five years with you in a five-minute speech. Honestly, a lot of it was pretty stressful, so I wouldn't want to unload that on you in five minutes anyways. But what I can do is share at least a few of those things. For example, I think we all learned that we can go much longer without sleep than we realized. We learned that we can learn a lot about a building just by licking it. Thank you, Professor Radzinski. We also learned that some people don't like it when you lick their building, so take care. In the wise words of Professor David Biggie, bathrooms are like children. You don't want to see them, you don't want to hear them, but you want them close by when you really need them. I also learned that the relationships that are made in a college studio are unlike any other. They're unparalleled. I probably won't have the same kinds of relationships that I make for the rest of my life. The memories that I've made here with everyone in front of me, I will cherish for forever. And I wouldn't be here today if it weren't for the fact that everyone here was by my side the whole time. The most important thing I learned at the school, though, is also what took me the longest. You see, when I tell someone that I'm an architecture student, the first question I always get is, what kind of architecture do you want to make? And I've always kind of hated that question, partly because I didn't know an answer. The way I saw it was that as long as I was making good architecture, I was going to be happy. But the problem with that was that I did not know how to qualify to myself what I saw as good architecture. But these past five years at the Faye Jones School of Architecture and Design, and especially the past three semesters in the Urban Design Build Studio, have started to allow me to define that. You see, here at the school, we have learned that through design, we can create jobs for people that otherwise don't have them. We've learned that through design, we can inspire people. Through design, we can create opportunities where they otherwise might not have existed. We've learned that we can craft spaces where people actually want to come together and be with each other. Through design, we can inspire change and we can make the world a better place. With design, we can do many more things than just create space. Now, don't get me wrong, a lot of our time has been spent on focusing on the importance of creating great space, but we've also started to learn how much more we can do and what an impact we can have on the world. Johanny Palazna says that through a, pro a profound design process, the architect, the patron, and every single person who enters the building leaves a slightly better human being. So today, all of us are about to embark to go and create landscapes, to create interiors, and to create architecture that is going to make the world a better place. And the next time that any of you enter a space that makes you feel very inspired, or the next time that you're in a place that makes you leave feeling like a better person, I want you to remember us, the class of 2021. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Daniel. I think, in fact, our next guest speaker has uh, uh, some resonance with your words. Uh, we uh, always have hoped to have a in-person commencement speaker. This year's circumstances prevented that from occurring. But we do have, yet again, uh, a recording from Yvonne Farrell of Grafton Architects. 
who uh, together with her partner Shelley McNamara last year won the Pritzker Prize for Architecture. And for those uh, guests who may not be aware of the significance of the Pritzker Prize, this is equivalent to the Nobel Prize in Architecture uh, in, the, in the world. Yvonne Farrell and her partner Shelley McNamara met during their studies at the School of Architecture at University College Dublin. Upon graduating in 1976, they were offered the unique opportunity to teach at University College Dublin, where they continued to educate until 2006, and teaching is central to how they view their work in architecture and design. In 1978, uh, Farrell and McNamara, along with several others, established a practice entitled Grafton Architects, named after the street of their original office to prioritize the existence of a place and a collective identity and a collective endeavor rather than individual ego. Their commissions since then have garnered them increasingly significant recognition they have worked not only in Ireland, but across Europe and now out in the world. They're fellows of the Royal Institute of Architects of Ireland, as well of uh, Britain. They've held uh, notable chairs at the Harvard Graduate School of Design and the Lewis Kahn Chair at Yale University, and they've taught in Switzerland uh, since 2006. We expect them here beginning next year. Grafton Architects were the recipient of the 2012 Biennale di Venezia Silver Lion Award, and the, they were then the 2018 co-curators for the entire Biennale di Architettura at the Biennale di Venezia with the theme, Free Space. In, on February 3rd, 2020, little more than a year ago, the Faye Jones School selected Grafton Architects Yvonne Farrell and Shelley McNamara to design the school's coming new research and development facility, the Anthony Timberland Center for Design and Material Innovation, now in schematic design. That was on February 3rd. On February 12th, 2020, Yvonne and Shelley were awarded the Pritzker Prize in, architect, in Architecture, the equivalent of the Nobel Prize as the world's best architect. And as a school with two AIA gold medalists amongst its faculty, this means that we have uh, continually attempted to surpass ourselves in indicating what we can do as a school in the culture of architecture and design. Let's hear from Yvonne Farrell as our commencement speaker. This is a very special day in your lives. You are graduating from university. Framed photographs will be placed on shelves on pianos, on walls, celebrating your achievements, remembering today. Think of all those hours that you have spent imagining, studying, making, developing yourself, pushing yourself to get to this wonderful day, confirming your abilities. Architecture, landscape architecture, and interior design. These three disciplines affect all of us deeply every day in all parts of the world. In these unusual times, which we are all experiencing, buildings, nature, and enclosing surfaces have taken on new and deeper meaning. When Shelley McNamara and I wrote the manifesto for the 2018 Venice Architecture Biennale, Free Space, we spoke about the earth as client. In all the disciplines we celebrate today, architecture, landscape architecture, and interior design, what we specify affects the earth. When we use concrete, wood, steel, when we choose plants, trees, irrigation systems, when we use water, we are using and transforming natural resources. Anne Neil Petrie, president and CEO of the National Association of Olmsted Parks, speaking about Frederick Olston, whom I greatly admire, says, and I quote, in many ways, he was a social reformer, realizing that the landscape could advance mental and physical health. He called parks lungs of the city because they were designed to be healthy places for city residences. He realized the importance of restoring people's contact with nature, particularly as more people live in cities. It is interesting that in his day, doctors actually started prescribing walks in central parks park as therapy. Olmsted understood that the thoughtful design and planning of parks and public spaces 
have powerful social, environmental, economic and health impacts on the lives of people and communities. In the Robert Maxwell Memorial Lecture, given on the 22nd of April last, by Professor Kenneth Frampton, he set out seven points of what he called the predicament of architecture. The seventh and last important point he made was that landscape, he believes, could supersede urban design. Professor Frampton makes the optimistic point that it may be possible to mediate the megalopolis with landscape interventions. The Irish interior designer and architect Eileen Gray began her art training in the Slade in London, but when she lives in Paris, she begins the rigorous training of lacquering, an ancient Japanese craft, which she perfects over time, becoming recognized as an expert. Finding expert tradesmen and training with them continues throughout her long and active life. Her wonderful freestanding screens with beautifully proportioned combinations of surface and emptiness. These act as reference and inspiration for our own work in our office, Craft and Architects. For example, the long elevation on the side street via Rundkin in Milan is influenced by her screen in Bocconi University in Milan. Also the deep wall, which faces west, the Huguenot Cemetery here in Dublin for our Department of Finance is influenced by her. The medical school for the University of Limerick with its folded limestone walls forming a colonnade is influenced by her. Philosophically and instinctively, Eileen Gray places the human being central to making. What I admire in her most is her ability to be in her spaces, to move outward from herself in a universal, human, highly trained, highly skilled way she transforms an idea, an invention into a new reality. She considers the size, the dimension, the position, the finish, the touch. Her work is a treasure trove of inspiration. Her inventions involve engineering and instinct, judgment and beauty. She has common sense with a unique personal taste. When she builds her house E1027, she decides not to alter the topography. When she draws a plan, she draws it in an amazing way. She draws the effect of the sun on the spaces. She sees the plan in a way of capturing reality. She tracks the passage of the sun all during the day. She tracks the pleasure it gives and observes the changing character of light. The University of Arkansas and this school of architecture has brought us Grafton Architects to Fayetteville and together with Moda Studio it is our great honour that we are making a project with your alma mater, the Anthony Pimbelin Centre. In a symposium held in August 2016 in celebration of the 70th anniversary of the Fay Jones School of Architecture and Design, Johanny Palazma gave a lecture which has been captured in a beautiful slender booklet, which I keep close and treasure. Palasma talks about the significant mental task of architecture, which put us in palpable contact with the world, heightening reality. He talks about architectures in the 20th and 21st century, not being directly interested in atmospheres and feelings, as these phenomena have been regarded as romantic aspiration. He argues for a renewed appreciation of the effect of materials on feeling, atmosphere and mood, and I quote, due to multiple associations, sensuality, tactility, and the pleasant fragrances of wood and the material's strong organic character, wood is possibly the most atmospheric of materials. And thus, it even has a significant role in creating a new atmospheric architecture. End of quote. He talks about our human capacity to sense and identify feelings as surprisingly immediate and precise. He quotes Peter Zumthor, the great Swiss architect who has said, and I quote, I enter a building and see a room and in a fraction of a second, 
I have a strong feeling about it. The historian, Dr. Edward McParland, has said that architects have always been concerned with the environment, even when untroubled by climate change. He refers to Vitruvius over 2000 years ago, who was deeply attentive to the quality of air, water, and the sun. Also referring to Alberti in the 15th century as a humanist who saw architecture as infrastructure of a civilized life. As you leave university today, we are here to celebrate each one of you. You are the future. We share a beautiful planet and we stand between ground and sky and we all have a part to play. As graduates, you have been trained to translate ideas into reality. Your optimistic professions gives each one of you opportunities to anticipate future realities. Your training is of the highest cultural importance because it involves enclosures for human lives. Congratulations to each one of you. Enjoy this special day. Thank you. Thank you, Yvonne. Let me just repeat, and of course, we are teaching and learning until the last possible moment. Let me just repeat, your education has prepared you for lives of the greatest cultural importance and value. That is what we hope for each and every one of you. But now it's time to start those lives, commencement, as we say, with the awarding of degrees. And note that I say awarding. Your degrees have been conferred already on Thursday by Chancellor Joseph Steinmetz in the All University Ceremonies. Tonight, we award you these degrees with pleasure and with a sense of pride. Before I begin, or before we begin, the naming of names by department, I'd like to recognize one, of, one more of our graduates in particular. Could I ask our graduate Justin Bottoms to stand and be recognized. Justin Bottoms has successfully completed all the requirements for his degree, but more importantly, perhaps, he has served our nation in our nation's military. And I'd like to ask for a round of applause for Justin Bottoms honoring our military. Thank you, sir. Now, graduates, we will be awarding degrees first by department and degree, the Department of Landscape Architecture first, the Department of Interior Design second, and the Department of Architecture third. As you move, you will move to the ramp here, walk up the ramp. I will hand you your diploma cover. We will pause for a photograph in front of the diploma table. You see our photographer here, and then you will exit stage right. And if you wish to stay, you can stay. If you and your family wish to depart, please do so quietly. Um, but uh, this is the procedure for this evening. Um, this is how we will proceed again. Landscape architecture first, interior design second, architecture third. Please let us begin. My name is Ken McCown. I serve as the department head in landscape architecture, and I'd like to congratulate the 2021 graduates of the department. We have two degrees, the Bachelor of Landscape Studies and the Bachelor of Landscape Architecture. Students approach the podium. Amanda Davidson, with distinction. Alexis Hall. Robert Ernest Buchanan. Brianna LaFleur. Isabel Troutman.
Carl Matthews, the head of the Interior Design Department, and um, we would like to celebrate the graduates this year. They've studied in Italy, they've studied in Spain, they've had field trips to Las Vegas and Palm Springs, and their flexibility and resiliency is going to carry them well through the world, our graduates of this year. Isabel Troutman. Ashley Carol Banks. Channing Bauman. Molly Lauren Blankenbecker. Grace Blazy. Sarah Madison Clifton. Kristen Davin, with distinction. Meiti Dinku Deyasa. Nicole Eversgird. Mungji Guy. Erica Grant. Taylor Herrig. Maggie Catherine Jones, with distinction. Peyton Kelly, with high distinction. Trinity Lee Quillen. Sydney Coutte. Carly Murray. Avery Omar. Megan Leanne Pretty. Anna Kate Brown. Ashton Thompson. Caroline Thornell. Reagan Wiggins, with distinction. Kaylee Williams. Elizabeth Willis, with distinction.
I'm John Fullen. I'm the head of the Department of Architecture, and we will be conferring uh, degrees for the Bachelor of Science in Architectural Studies as well as the Professional Bachelor of Architecture program. I want to congratulate the students on their success, perseverance this year, and demonstration of great will. Congratulations. Tanner Addison Graham Lloyd. Lauren Michelle Mills. Dylan Nineswander, with distinction. Daniela Lucia Sanivas. These are the Bachelor of Architecture degrees. Jacob Alford. <laughs> Maria Camila Alvarez. Thomas Swanson Benke. Katira Bethel. Justin Bottoms. Mary Grace Correo. Emily Marie Cross. Shavana Anita Merkel Dean, with distinction. Alexandria Gabrielle De Stefano. Madeline Firm. Bryant Gonzalez. Ryan Elizabeth Jamison. Kinley Matthews. Jessica Ann Maynard, with distinction. David Gratian Orcutt.
Bailey Pearson. David Petsampu. Saba Rostami Shirazi. Kirsten Elizabeth Rouse. Charles Stone, Jr. Anthony Sizucraft. Kennedy Van Trump with distinction. Henoveva Vasquez. Garrison Mitchell Weaver. Colin Williams. Coco Yin with distinction. Wen Jie Zhu, magna cum laude. Daniel Barker, magna cum laude. There is indeed cause for celebration. And for those who are still here, could we have a round of applause for our 2021 Faye Jones School of Architecture and Design graduates? We still have an audience at home or elsewhere in the world, and a few final comments in order to bring this evening to a conclusion. I've already expressed our deep gratitude to our faculty and staff. I certainly would like to extend that to the security, the police force, uh, all of our technicians here who made this evening possible. My last message to all of you gathered and graduated here is a hope that your ambitions in work in architecture and design will aim beyond planned quantification of needs and in fact embody desires deeper than the demonstrations of consumer culture. My hope is that you will commit yourselves to your work in the achievement of an ideal ethical dimension 
an authentic attitude of how to live, animating both individual and society in all that you attempt to construct. Go forward, cultivate kindness, and indeed design a better world. Thank you and good night on behalf of the Faye Jones School of Architecture and Design and the University of Arkansas. This concludes our spring 2021 commencement ceremony.